At some point in your life, you've probably been stuck behind a train. Even though it might be moving quickly, it still may take a few minutes to pass. As car after car rolls by, it's hard to imagine how just a couple locomotives can pull all that tonnage. In today's video, we're going to cover the science behind the amazing pulling power of trains. The ability for a locomotive to pull so much at one time all boils down to friction, or the lack thereof in this case. The smoothness of the rails coupled with the small contact area of the train wheels creates a very low friction environment. In fact, the contact area between the top of the rail and the bottom of the wheels is only about the size of a dime. What's really cool is seeing demonstrations of just how little friction rail cars have. Look at this Ford commercial from a few years ago where an electric F-150 pulled a million pounds worth of auto racks. If this truck were to try and pull a million pounds worth of semi-trailers, it would never work. The static friction between the trailer's tires and the road would be too much to overcome, because there's too much contact area. But with rail cars, all the moving surfaces are as smooth, small, and precise as possible, making this insane feat achievable. Even cooler still is seeing people move rail equipment, now, a person can't achieve a million pound pull, but it's possible to move a single rail car or locomotive nearly unaided. With that being said, don't a one of y'all go around trying to do this. It's far too easy to get hurt or end up with a runaway car. When everything involving the movement of trains has as low a friction as possible, how do the locomotives themselves get their wheels turning without peeling out all the time? As many of y'all know, Locomotives have sanders to aid in traction, but there's another secret weapon that locomotives have that might not be so obvious, and that's sheer weight. Let's look at a typical SD70 Ace, which weighs 428,000 pounds. With 12 points of contact with the rails, this means that each of the wheel's contact areas have 35,500 pounds crushing down on an area similar to the size of a dime. Locomotives are also equipped with some of the most powerful traction motors on the market, which provides immense torque. All this torque, weight, and low friction is great, but sometimes locomotives still struggle to pull trains, especially when starting up from a dead stop. And this is because of static friction. Static friction is the force that opposes the potential momentum of a stationary object, and any stationary object will remain in place until the static friction is overcome. In other words, it's the reason why my finger bends so much when I push this coffee maker. So let's look at a train that's come to a complete stop and needs to get going again. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to assume this train is starting out on a straight track with a 0% grade. All the rail cars that make up the train weigh exponentially more than the locomotives. And because the train's at a dead stop, the static friction from hundreds of wheels makes it extremely difficult for the engines to get everything moving. While it's true there's extremely low friction between the cars and the rail, that doesn't mean there's no friction, and that small amount of friction can quickly compound. It would be near impossible for any locomotive to pull an entire train at once from a dead start, but if the locomotive start out by pulling just one car at a time and gradually adds on weight, then all of a sudden you can have a single SD40-2 pull a mile's worth of rail cars. This is all thanks to the draft gear located behind each and every coupler on the train. Draft gears allow weight to be added gradually by letting the coupler slowly move in and out of a big sleeve. You can even hear draft gears in action when trains are accelerating and decelerating. This is what rail fans and railroaders call slack. On exponentially long trains, the engine might even be moving at a couple miles per hour before the end of the train even starts to get going. Since draft gears allow locomotives to gradually add weight, one car at a time, this also means that they're only overcoming the static friction of one car at a time, giving locomotives the ability to pull thousands of tons like it's nothing. So there you have it. It's all a combination of overcoming static friction, taking advantage of extremely low rolling friction, 
gradually adding weight and exceptionally powerful traction motors that give locomotives the ability to pull things exponentially heavier than they are. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Till next time.